Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiakos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I'm going to sign or no for Olympiakos, I said, you're a pretty good deal, like my friend. I can't speak, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> What's up, everybody? Happy New Year. Gate 7 International. Alibiakos just won four. Well, not just one. It happened a couple hours ago. But Alibiakos won four nothing. Happy days for everyone, along with some other results in not just other sports, but in other games in the league today. We're going to jump into all of that later today. Costa and Costa, how are you guys doing today? What's happening, man? Good to be back on the show. Uh, Good it to really... have you back. Happy New Year to you. Yeah, it feels like, it, I, I think... It was like mid-December we did a show, or maybe it was the deep dive. I don't remember. It feels like I've been It's been, been too long. It's been too long, man. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I am glad to be back. Glad to get things rolling again. Holiday mode is coming to an end. Everything's restarting. Cosas Lianos, how are you doing, buddy? Well, always great to be here, guys. Always great to be here with you. It's a good evening uh, for Libyakos fans, and we're going to dive right into it. That's right. But before we get started, guys, if you haven't done so already... Like and subscribe. A bunch of you are already tuning in. Many were sitting in the waiting room just waiting for us to get started. Those of you that aren't subscribed, just hit that, that button at the bottom. Ring the bell if you want to be notified anytime we go live. And like the video. The interactions are great for the algorithm. This is how we grow the community. So do your part. It costs you nothing. Hit the button at the bottom and help us grow this red-white community. Now, before we get started, we have a couple of announcements from our sponsors, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are shipping anywhere outside the United States, to Europe, to South America, to Australia, it doesn't matter. Check out our friends at Piraeus International. They can help you ship your goods anywhere in the world, whether you're coming from Greece to the U.S. to the U.K., wherever they can help you give them a call 410-675-4696 uh check the international country codes if you're dialing from out of the country give them a visit on their website at www.pereasintl.com that's spelled Piraeus like the port in greece and of course guys uh as always for those of you that are betters out there we did a huge section of betting during the world cup we're going to pick it up again when champions league and europa league of course the the playoffs the knockout round start we're going to pick that up again uh visit betus.com.pa use our promo code gate 7 intl all caps and they will match your first deposit after you make your account 125% so it's a really nice deposit match. They are very aggressive, uh, and their odds are fantastic. I know, Costa, you brought it up during the World Cup. They had great odds. Uh, I cleaned up during the World Cup. It was fantastic. I'm definitely doing that again. Very enjoyable. Check it out, guys. And, of course, all restrictions apply. Uh, oh, Netherlands. Tuning in from the Netherlands. Love it. Love everybody already chiming in, already telling us where you guys are coming from. Big stuff, big stuff. Uh, also, shout out to Olympiacos Basketball, uh, tied for number one in EuroLeague, and they just beat Ike today, correct, Costa? Yeah, I think they dropped 100 against them, 111-71, I think the score was. But yeah, good uh, good evening all round. 4-0 thrashing in football, a nice win against Ike in basketball. Of course, we expected nothing, nothing less. And Isaiah Cannon going off, dropping three, no, I get, keep getting that wrong. Eight three pointers today against Ike. I think that's a club record breaking. Uh, even Tyler Dorsey and Milan Tomic is record. That's uh, unbelievable. Um, we'll we'll sort out a dedicated basketball basketball episode. We had some people asking us on the DMs the other day. Can you guys do ratings for basketball as well? And I was like, whoa, more work to do. But it's great. Uh, loving the enthusiasm, guys. And we are close to hitting. 2700 subs on on youtube so for those of you that are new joining like hit the like button subscribe for more content we're going to keep it coming it's a new year we're back in action we're 
we're ready. We're ready, guys. This is big. 2023, big things are happening. It could be one of the most legendary title challenges ever in the history of Greek football. Um, I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. I think it is as well. Uh, we started off, I mean, we were double digit points back. Now here we are, a nice result. Uh, Ike beating Panathinaikos. We're now minus seven. Um, a place that we all much rather be than minus 10, of course. So it's big stuff going on. The team is looking better, uh, playing the type of ball that we expect Alibiakos to be playing. Uh, a lot of balls going forward, attractive, attractive football, which is one of the most important things as well. So, um, there's still, of course, a lot of room for improvement, but this is a hell of a lot better than what we saw at the very least in the first half of the season. There's a semblance of a plan at the very least. The clear out that we've been begging for is underway as well. So unfortunately, the mistakes that were made were made, but the club is making the right steps forward. It's just a shame that we have to take multiple steps back before we can make those steps forward. But it is what it is. We're going to take the positivity while we we'll have it. We're going to continue moving forward uh, and take all of the success that comes with that. So let's get into it. Let's get your thoughts on the game, guys. Uh, Libyakos destroy Volos for nothing. Uh, yet again, another dominant first half. Since the new year, our first half performances have been... I can't think of a first half performance we've had since the new year that hasn't been dominant that hasn't been great it's usually the second half where we start to worry because things start to slow down we kind of start to relax because of the leads we have but i mean from the 20th it was like 23 seconds we had our first opportunity uh on goal in this game it was uh right from the get-go and then of course during the first half we had a lot of opportunities um, but the first goal comes from uh, a lovely play from Costa Fortuni, who is dribbling the ball on the end line, like where the goal line is on the our left side, and draws a penalty, kicking the ball into the defender's hand. Um, it was a penalty. I'm not sure what took so long for the VAR check for the penalty, but I, I still believe, and I am willing to put money, that they were checking for offsides for Bakambu at the start of that play. I'm going to put money on that, that that's what they were looking for, uh, for that VIR check. But it goes through, we get the penalty, Pep BL scores, and we go on to dominate the first half, get two more goals. The third goal of which was also set up by Costas Fortunis, sending it down to Oleg Rebchuk, who then crosses the ball into Bakambu. And that's following a lovely second goal by Inbam Huang, who wins the ball and then rips a shot outside. It was 22 meters, I think they said. Um, was the shot with his left foot, his off foot, really well taken shot. Uh, the team played very well in the first half. And of course, El Arabi, super sub comes in, gets goal number four, and it was just dominance the rest of the game. How did you guys see that game? Costa K, get us started. Well, I mean, it is a, this is a huge result, something I wouldn't have said 12 months ago. Uh, this is the first time Olympiacos win three games in a row this season. Uh, uh, excellent first half. Olympiacos took all of their three big opportunities. The penalty by Pepiel, which, you know, when I saw him running, he did a bit of that Paul Pogba thing I hate when, you know, they, they barely run. I was getting a little, I was quaking in my boots a little bit, but what a clinical finish. Huang in bomb, I don't think there's anything more to say. I mean, this guy's class, way too good for the Greek League. Uh, and then you got Cedric Bakambu with a very rare piece of skill by Oleg Reabchuk and that such a pinpoint cross. Terrible defending, completely forgetting a, a striker like Cedric Bakambu could lead you to a situation like this. And then, of course, you had a Larabi's goal in there in the, in the second half. Again, Olympiacos do slow down in the second half. Obviously, that's because Olympiacos do score in the first half, but they, they, paid, uh, they paid for it at Yanina. They had a they had a comfortable lead, a two point, a, a two nil lead at Yanena, which you know, winning when you're winning two nil at halftime in Greece, it's like winning five nil in the Premier League. Well, whereas you know, a two nil lead in the Premier League means nothing. Whereas in Greece, it could mean like, yeah, that's it, game over. They do slow down. That's something that does concern me, especially now that the big games are coming. Uh, 
I like what I'm seeing, though. I feel like Olympiacos are finding a personality. They're finding a character. They're showing some mentality. And I feel like they do feel like there's a there's a wind of change coming in, which is why the next game against Thadis is extremely important because it is a derby. For some reason, the games against Thadis are now derbies. Olympiacos haven't won a derby yet. They know that. So if they beat Aris next, uh, next week, well... That, that's going to bring a, a new air of confidence at the ready because, you know, we've won four games in a row. We've won a derby. Now we won the big thing. And who knows? You know, Panathinaikos are playing Yanina, are playing at Yanina next week after losing to Aik, their first game losing. And then they got Pauk. So in two weeks' time, if Panathinaikos do screw up royally, that minus seven could turn into minus one. Absolutely. Costa C, what were your thoughts on the game today? Yeah, bang on. I think uh, I think first of all, going into the game, you have to remember that Ayak and Panathinaikos have both gone to Panathinaikos and they've smashed Volos as well. And I commented on this, you know, with with friends on on social media, etc. And I said, you know, Volos are a top six side, and I feel like Fernandez, who they sold to Ayak, is a is a big miss for for them. Um, it was easier than I expected. I didn't expect us to be three nil at, at half time. So I was curious to see like how Volos would approach this game. I thought they would have. Uh, I expected more, more resistance. To be honest with you, but like you said, Ari, we went into the game very strong already in the first minute. Biel's got a shot on target, and we had two, three, two, three chances. Chances, half chances, call them what you will, in the first three minutes, and we win the penalty. And I think, you know, to a great extent, Fortunis unlocks the game, breaking through on the left hand side there. Biel was waiting for the pass for a tap in, and the defender's gone down, and the ball's hit his hand, handball penalty. Don't know what took them so long. Um, maybe they were making phone calls. I won't speculate anymore. But, um, Costa mentioned that we hadn't won three in a row. And that is that is a key kind of takeaway after this. Is the first time we've won three consecutive matches. It's the first time we've also beaten a top six side this season. And it's the first time we fielded an unchanged starting 11 following the last game. So for me, that's... That's a really important point to bring up, I feel. Um, and I I want to give I want to give a shout out to to coach because he's been called in to do an almost impossible job. Um okay, we we can we can say is it an impossible job? Like he call it what you will, he's managed to finally turn this group of players into something that resembles a, a, a team that you can turn the turn the channel on Sunday and watch Olympiacos again. Because, you know, in 2022, like this season, Olympiacos has been unwatchable. It's been hard to watch, guys. But honestly, like, we're, we're, he, he's the one that decided to play three tens. And, you know, we've talked about that. We've questioned it. If not, you know, if the three of them aren't performing top, 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 then, you know, at least one or two of them will be. And those are quality players up there. Biel, Fortunis, James Rodriguez. Uh, I thought James had a bit of an off day today. Yeah. But, you know, Fortunis did the job. And, and I think, um, yeah, fair, credit credit where credit's due to, to Mitchell. I... I've been critical of him in some of his game management. Sometimes I thought, you know, he could bring Samaseku on earlier to, to, to shore up the, the, the midfield against Yanina, for example, uh, in, in the first league game of, of 2023. But but yeah, man, I think like we've got to we've got to give a shout out to the coach for the for the job that he's done. And and I don't want to keep going. One more stat for you. It's 11 goals now in three games. 11 goals in three games, five against Asteras, two against Ionikos, three today against... Uh, so, sorry, what four. am I saying? Four. 
four today against uh, against Volos. And and the last thing I'll say is that you know confidence is an incredible thing, and you see it on the pitch, the body language, you see it and you hear it in the comments of the players post match. You know, Bakambu was talking about that in the post match comments, and. And the manager, he has this ability. We knew this when when he came in. He has this great ability talking to the press and talking to the players. That they asked him right after the game, "What do you want to happen in the Panathinaikos Ayat game?" And his response was, "It was like um, trying to translate now in my mind." He said, "If we play like we played today, or if we keep performing." then, you know, the, the job's going to do itself and we're going to be there or thereabouts at the end of this, yeah? So he didn't even pay mind to, you know, what's happening in the other game. So it's all about what we do. And that, it, that, that goes to the players. He was asked about transfers and he said, I can't talk about transfers when the players are playing like that on the pitch. Yes, we are going to make transfers. But again, like he takes that and, conveys the confidence back to the players and it's there for all to see yeah. i got a question i got a very quick question for the panel though uh you mentioned about those three tens uh the game the, the games are going to get on, are only going to get harder especially when the playoffs come around which let's face it this is going to be the most exciting playoffs in greek football history uh probably even a four horse race by the time we get around this don't you think that the lack of wingers will be an issue against a tougher team. I mean, you're going to need players to break inside the box for those big games. Don't you think that's going to be that might be a bit of an issue there? I I do th I do think so, and that's why this that's why this game against Adis is so important. Uh because now we can see okay, against a team that is higher quality, it is higher caliber, not to take away from the the Atromidoses of the world, not to take away from you know, Ionikos and, and and the teams that we've been playing so far, but they, they're a tier below what we what we are going to be facing and the teams that we need to start beating. They're they're a team below the the derbies. So we have to see, you know, and Adis gave us a lot of trouble in the first half of the season. So this is going to be a test. Um I saw some comments joking about Adis being a derby. Fine, say what you will, but it they're a tougher team and this is a good test. Can this work with three tens? I think it can, but I also think this is going to be, you know, a time we see, okay, well, what, what adjustments need to be made? You know, sure, against the smaller teams, our, our quality can just crush right through them. But can it do so against a better team, a team that has a game plan, a team that has a good system in play? This We are going to see this. I, I'm not going to say that I think Michelle should be changing anything from the get-go because so far it's working and I'd like to see how it does, especially in the first half against Adis. I think, I think that we should be okay. It'll be, a, I'm not saying it'll be an easy match. I'm not saying we're going to crush Adis two, three, nothing, but I think, I think based on what we've seen, I think at the very least we're going to play much better than we did in the first half of the season. A small stat I want to throw at you guys as well. Um, if since Michelle's arrival, if we look at big scoring chances and a big scoring chance uh, using Y scout is any scoring chance that is above a 0.2 XG. That's what they measure as a big scoring chance before Michelle's arrival. If we include the champions league, Europa league qualifiers, everything we were averaging barely one, one and a half big scoring chances per game. That is nothing under Michelle since he's arrived. We're averaging over three and a half big scoring chances per game. Just in the second half of the season so far, if and this is including the cup game against Atromidos, we're over four big chances per game. We had three big chances again, three big chances, um, according to SofaScore at least, today. So these are all big things. And you know what? On paper, do we want to see three tens on the field? Uh, okay, maybe, maybe not, but right now it's working. We're creating two and three times more opportunities per game than we were before. So whatever this is, it's working. And I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel at the very least for these big games. Let's roll with it. Let's see how it does. And if we have to change some things to add more width 
then let's see how it happens. But I think right now this is what has to be done, and we roll with this with Adis. I just want to bring up Manos' comment here, and he's also asking about thoughts on Rodine. He says, do you think our team performances are based on personal talent and quality rather than teamwork? I mean, who cares? We need results, he says. Um, I want to link this back to Costa's question. So I think Rodine, it's early days. Eh? It's his second game. But honestly, already in, in a short space of time, you can see that the, the guy's a proper a proper right back like he not afraid to even take on the defenders i i love the fact that he he kind of he does stay quite close to the byline and he's always in front of the halfway line so he provides that you know width he stretches the field because the three tens don't and you need your wing backs to do that you need a confident wing back as well um to be able to you know, take on defenders, be aggressive, something that we've been lacking on the left side because we all know Oleg's pros and cons. He off The thing that frustrates me the most about Oleg is that he can produce a cross like the one he did today, but off time, he's afraid to take the man on and he'll get the ball and the first thing we do is pass it right back and then we go build up from the beginning again. I saw in I saw so many times today, times when Rodine got the ball on the right hand side, and you saw Biel cutting in between the left back and the centre back to get in between the defenders, and Rodine's played a ball from the back through the lines to look for to look for Biel or whoever was on whoever was on his side. And that's in two games. In a matter of two games, you've seen Rodine do things that no one's done since maybe even, even even Omar didn't do that. Look for those kind of passes from the back into the, the, the quote unquote winger or the player that was on his side in front of him in this instance being BL. So I think there is um, there is a method to the madness from Mitchell. I think the high press is super important. We saw that today. Bakambu is key. Huang, the amount of balls he stole in the first half, whenever whenever Volos got the ball back, we'd won it back within three, four seconds. Biel's pressing, Bakabu's pressing, Huang's pressing, uh, even Fortunis. Yeah, not with the intensity of Biel, but you've got those players forward that are pressing. And that's that's super important. How it will pan out against the bigger teams in the derbies. I'm the proof will be in the pudding. We still have to see that, and it will be a bigger test next week against Adis, who I think they they won comfortably today. Um, one thing I like today is that finally Samaseku got more time, and we'd been talking about Marcelo and Samaseku, didn't we? We said that if Marcelo plays, Samaseku has to play as well, and they came on at the same time today. Now, will we see, um, we saw today for 10, 15 minutes, Juan, Samaseku and Mvila playing in the same lineup. And Samaseku wasn't the six. Mvila was sitting in front of the defence and Samaseku was playing almost in line with, with Juan, just a, a little bit further back, but he was covering that space on the left-hand side. So he had the instruction, cover the left, cover the left when, when Marcelo goes up. So maybe that's something we see. Uh, uh, I do have, th this is just a hunch, even in the big games, even in next week, particularly at Garay Skagi, it's going to be the same lineup. It's going to be exactly the same. And that's what I think Micho is trying to bring to Olympiakos, is that high press. He wants wing backs that stretch the field because we don't have classic wingers that can penetrate. Uh, that's That's what I see. I like uh, I like Rodine so far. Sorry, apologies for that, Ari. I do like yeah. Rodine's performances. One, if I could describe him in one word, that'd be composed. He's a player that has a very good. He's a very good passer. He's very good under pressure. We haven't seen him in difficult games yet, especially in difficult arenas, in difficult stadiums like a, like two like it will be at Dubai and the Yashofia and. 
well, little photos when they go back in the, at the playoffs. But he's been so composed. It, 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 he beams confidence. His runs are good. His positioning is always good. And, and it seems like he does want to succeed at Olympiacos. I mean, today he almost scored a freaky, a freaky goal today when he rattled the crossbar with his shot slash cross. I'm so far so good from uh, from Rodine. I believe the next game against Star is going to tell us a lot more about him. Guys, for fuck's sake, like, so, sorry for my language, but like, Flamengo is a demanding side, like, and, and there were. You know, some people likening his move to um, to Rafinha, for for example. But the guys, the guys who, motivated. Who did that? Who who no, who no, likened him no, to Rafinha? No, who no, likened no, him to Rafinha? <laughs> no, 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 not going to say names, but the guy's motivated. He didn't come from Flamengo at the age of 34, 35 after you know great career in Europe, etc. Rafinha, he's never played in Europe. He's got something to prove. Like he he wants it. And so far, so far, so good. Like I'm not the fellow under Grosso Zepso, the baby. Like I like what I see so far. Yeah, I saw. Look in the deep dive, I ch- completely had changed my opinion. Like before, I really was watching the tape on him, looking at his stats. I was not super impressed, but then the more I watched, I saw a lot of the traits that I wanted to see that we hadn't seen. My God, today, I told you guys in the chat. Today was exactly the the response to a lot of the the fans that get upset with us for um uh for they say constantly being negative about Oleg today was one of those games and Oleg had an assist today I'm not taking that away from him but today was one of those games where you saw the clear difference like sure maybe Rodine on paper did not uh there was no goal contributions. Okay. On paper, he he didn't have any of those. But the intent going forward with the ball, that's what we want out of our fullbacks. When he gets into sticky situations, he starts dribbling at people, not going backwards. All of that. You you saw that today. That's the rebuttal. Uh, if Oleg was a little bit more like that, I think more people would have a more positive opinion of him um, overall. And yeah, Rodinay does have very accurate passing under pressure. That's 100% true. Um, so... I, I I love that guy. Do you I, think I he's think, better? Do you right. think he's better than Vrsalik and Lala? <laughs> I mean, he... let me let me think. It's a bit of a tricky one, isn't it? Oh, look. Still... It... <laughs> Sometimes these comments, I swear. But I... the Vrsalik, the whole thing was was the health man. If he were healthy, it, it would have been a diff- completely different situation. He would have been a huge success if he was healthy at Olympiacos. If if he had knees, if he had, uh, what else was he missing? What was the other thing besides the knees? Was it his hip? I think so. Or back? I don't remember, but he was in a really bad the knees. The, 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 the knee was enough, man. The knee was enough. Both knees. It wasn't just one knee. It was both knees. Like, I mean, if, but, and that's the thing, man, if he's, and you can make the argument, like if he didn't have those problems, would he have even come to Olympiacos? You know what I mean? Like if he was healthy, right? Would he have, would he, even at his age, would he have come to Greece? Probably not. But still, that's, that it was a gamble. Unfortunately, the gamble doesn't always turn out. So, and you have some players like this, uh, like Fiscardo's comment here. Um, He's been here 20 days and, it looks like he's been at Olympiacos from the start of the season. Some players are like that, man. With with they they gel with certain characters. Some aren't. Some need more time. Um, I do. I did listen to that, and Lambro did say that Juan can't defend well. Josh Gray calling him out. Love it. To Lambro's credit, though, I'll point this out. Um, physically, like in physical tussles, like Huang isn't a six. I mean, if you're using him as a six, you're not getting out of him what you're supposed to be, but he's very good at anticipating where the ball's going to go. And you saw that today. He's not listening. He's not listening to Labra. So, but (laughs) yeah, that, that did. uh, I saw that comment when it first came out and made me chuckle. Poor Labra. It's getting called out all over the shop. (laughs) I love it. Uh, Huang, there were there were people that didn't like my man of the match, Fortunis. Huang was my number two man. I love Huang. I thought he had a great game today. Do, I love do, him as a player too. 
do you want to unorthodoxly do the man of the match and coaches grade now before we move no. to other topics? No. Let's leave it for or, the or end. Or do we always do that last? I, I don't know. Just... It's the main event. It's the main it's event. A new, it's, a, it's a new year. Just making suggestions. <laughs> Leave it for later. Leave it for later. We don't want to break with the tradition. No, but, well, there's, uh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Gosa. No, oh, no saying, just... like, do, do we have anything anything else to say about the game itself like today? No, I mean, we've already talked about really the main points of the game very well. But touching on the question about whether it was more individual performances versus a team performance, there is merit to that. Look at a lot of the goals that we have gotten so far in the second half of the season. A lot of them are just individual efforts. Uh, like the, the really far shots that we've gotten. Gostas Fortunis's goal, or I mean him drawing the penalty from an yeah. individual effort, not team ball. That was him dribbling the ball up. His goal against Ionikos, individual effort. Even the, the Inbom, Inbom Huang's um, goal today, individual effort totally individual and the el arabi goal was a freaky goal it was uh, just a, a yeah. bunch of a, a bunch of deflections yeah Good and finish, he, scrappy he gets the ball scores uh and you know those types of goals we would see a lot more from him before this season the only really team goal that we had was the third goal was the goal yeah. where uh, costa sends oleg oleg sends the cross in that was more of a team build up goal but there is uh that was manos that brought that up earlier right uh, yeah, about team, seven. whether it's the team or whether it's the individuals. Yeah, there there is merit to that, and that's what's kind of scary going into these derbies. I think the cohesion yeah. is coming, but yes, uh, there is a lot of individuality which has helped propelling these, and you can see that statistically. Also, I brought up um, on our Twitter uh, after uh, the game against Ionicos that the the underlying context of our games hasn't really changed since the second half of the season we're playing well we're creating a very similar number of opportunities possessions very similar the press is very similar everything is very similar the what has been the difference between the score lines is just the individual efficiency of the goal of the chances we score um that's how it looks so far we're gonna have to wait and see a lot from Olympiacos as we move forward i mean that game against that is going to be so crucial to see how Olympiacos are going to keep uh, are going to keep improving and how they're going to look in the playoffs because they're going to face teams that do can choke teams that only have individual individuals instead of a team will be because we'll have to show cohesion they will have to show chemistry they will have to show like they know each other they know how to play together in those big games because th those are teams that can they can tire you they can, so that's why you need to uh, you, you need that chemistry i don't know like uh, the, the next game against that is going to be very crucial for the season, in my opinion, I agree. every ne every next game is the most crucial until the next one. Literally, well, no, it's not the same because first of all, Aris, I, I don't consider Aris to be a derby, but people call it a derby because Aris have been consistently in the top four these past few seasons. But still, Aris will be a force in the playoffs right now. Uh, there will be an opponent that could cut a few points from certain of Olympiacos rivals, if not Olympiacos themselves. So it will be. This will show us a lot. If Olympiacos manage to to beat them and beat them comfortably, that's going to tell us a lot. But if they struggle, then we got an issue still, even if they win. No, but we don't. We don't have any uh, any 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 room for for error. We don't. No, no actually, actually don't. absolutely. That's why I think Aris is going to tell us a lot. It's going to be a good rehearsal before the big games with Pauk, Panathinaikos, and Aik, especially Aik. Yep. But look, we're playing well, and there's another opportunity to catch up on Panathinaikos as well with Basianina. Uh, we talked about it a little bit before, so let's let's hope that we continue. The team continues to play as well as it has, and that it continues to take these points and at least get us in a competitive position before before getting to the playoffs, because that's really what we need. If we can be in a competitive position before we get into the playoffs, which are still you know, a few game weeks away, more than a few game weeks away, then that's that's really the best that we can ask for. It's more than we hoped was possible uh, before before the mid-year break. Um, and Manos is asking another question, which is actually an important thing we wanted to touch on as well. Should we move into uh, the segment about Oleg? Yeah. Yeah. Before, before we do, I just want to um, – I, I want to – 
have a quick look at something. So on the last show, I said that every show we're going to ask the question, can we win the league? Uh, so before before Christmas holidays, we asked the question and it was about 55%, I think we're saying we can win the league. Um, around New Year, it went up to about 80. And today we've asked the question and the vote is still there, guys. If you haven't voted, vote now. Do you believe we can win the league? 94% of you are saying yes now. Only 6% of you are saying no. So the trend is positive. And I mentioned again on the last show, it feels like sometimes like the answer to that question like, can change immediately following like a bad result or whatever. But um, But there you go. 94% of you saying we can win the league. I think we've actually managed to address almost all of the comments that have come in. Thank you so much, everyone that's been sending comments in. Hit the like button if you haven't done so already. It doesn't cost you anything. It takes two seconds and it really helps us out. And for those of you that are new, we're Gate 7 International, your number one English source for all things Olympiacos. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you don't miss notifications for whenever we go live, whenever we put out videos, vlogs, etc. I'm going to put it out there as well. I'm going to be trying very hard to come out to Greece on the 26th of February for the Panathinaikos derby. So vlog incoming as well and hopefully see as many of you outside the stadium as possible too. All right. Um, Oleg? Yeah. Oleg, seems like it's his last game. Um, we don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure. Of course, uh, a lot a lot can happen. A lot can happen. Bologna were at the game at Volos to watch him play, and they will be against Atromitos uh, in Athens for the second leg of the Greek Cup game mid uh, midweek. What we do, according to reports, Olympiakos have turned down an offer for Oleg already from Bologna. Uh, we're hearing about offers in the region of four to five million euros, which in my opinion is take it and run. Just take that money and run. Uh, but it's very important to uh, to seal a substitute. I mean, the fact only that Olympiacos are looking at Lato, Suazo, and considering um, Tofolo just tells you that Mitchell doesn't, doesn't trust Marcelo. I mean, he's not leaving, and there's a lot of reasons why he's not leaving. Costa, you said it's uh, it's probably due to PR, and I totally agree with you. He doesn't trust Leitner either, for reasons that we still can't completely understand. So Libyakos need a left back. Uh, Lato doesn't seem certain, doesn't seem too keen. He's not responding. He's not making a decision about his future. Gennaro Gattuso, the Valencia manager, was asked today if he's staying, and he he said he's very confident he's going to stay uh, until June, at least when his contract ends. So Suazo appears to be uh, the front runner for, uh, on this. Uh, talks are ongoing and progressing very well for the free agent. So yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you want. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, it'd be great. It'd be great business uh, letting Ole go for four to five million uh, euros. But obviously, you need a replacement. Just a tiny little parenthesis. Does he mean me or you, Costa? That guy. <clears throat> um, and Andy's, Andy's a friend. Andy, if you're addressing me, you do it with a C. If you're addressing yeah. me, yeah, with a K. God, so we don't get confused. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't I, did I say that? Did I say that? Or is me, me too. I'm not sure. Did I say that? I, I mean, no, Andy, I've, been, I've, been, I've been quite cagey. I've been quite apprehensive throughout the may, entire season. May, maybe I did say that. I can't remember. I, I don't know. I don't know. But what do you guys think about the Ramchuk? My opinion of Rebchuk hasn't changed for a very long time. I, when we heard about the rumor that somebody offered us five million was over the summer, I don't understand why we didn't take the money and run. That's me personally. That report was refuted by Nikola Koplos some weeks ago when it was brought up. I, I but 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 right. yeah, he would he would refute it. But right, exactly. That's why I said if you believe it, I would have taken it and run. If it happened, I would have taken that money and run. Don't forget, guys. We bought we bought Oleg. He wasn't he wasn't that expensive. We did pay about two million for him. We were fighting with Porto for him uh, for, uh, when we picked him up from uh, Patros uh, Patros de Ferreira. So five million is good money for him for a player 
that is not extremely valued by the mass populace of Olympiacos. That is a win in my book. And unfortunately, we're at a point in time, guys. We need to rebuild our credibility in the transfer market. Because unfortunately, with with what's happened with some players, we overvalued some. We didn't sell them when we could, and we're going to get less fees. I think we need to learn our lesson from the players we held on to too long. And and move the players out while we can get good money for them. I don't think we should be holding out for unreasonable sums. So five million, four and a half, five million, I think, for Oleg is a good fee. We make money. Uh, I think it's a good, good deal. I mean, it was the same. I was the same. I mean, there were also rumors about Masuras and Bukhalaikis uh, over the summer as well. If those fees were true, I would have taken that money and run as well for both of those players. So I think I think the club, even if it means we're getting fees that are maybe a little bit less than we'd like, some of these players that have kind of hit their peak, we're not getting any improvement out of them. Players don't want to stay here unless you're Greek born or unless you're Greek and tied to Greece. You don't want to stay here for your career. You want to move on. So we need to accept that. And when we complete a cycle with a player, a couple of seasons he does well, he's peaking, sell them. It sucks in some ways because you want to see those players stay, but this is the nature of the beast. And we have to be much better as a club about selling those players. So that's that's my opinion. It hasn't changed regarding this Oleg situation. Before I weigh in on that, I just want to address this. So Quad Returns, I think this is a new subscriber. Thank you for subscribing, mate. Um, how do you even watch the Greek League in the UK, he asks. Um, first of all, None of us are actually in the UK, um, but you, you took you got it from the accent probably. Um, so, like most people, a lot are a lot of us watch via illegal streams, or I think Ari uses Paramount Plus for some games. Uh, or that was Sling. for Champions League, Champions League, Europa League. The or rest Sling. was Net TV Plus. Yeah, that that was last for year. Nova. Wasn't it? They have Nova still. Yeah. So. If you guys living abroad or born abroad, whatever, whoever you are following Olympiacos, if you have friends or families in Greece that have Cosmote, they are they are eligible to have a uh, an um, to get a code to watch Cosmote on their laptops, uh, the, the iPhones, um, iPads, whatever. So you can download Cosmote TV app onto your device wherever you are in the world and if one of your friends or relatives has Cosmo there and is a subscriber you can ask them you know to give you their pin and you can watch on your device I can't remember how many people can watch at the same time but basically if your families are watching on TV and you've got the app then you can watch it as well anywhere in the world there's no geo blocking that's actually how I watched the game today uh Costa you got your hand up Let's go yes on, uh, teacher I have a question uh after the UK left the EU, though, I thought that Cosmote was for EU, uh, was for EU nationals. Ah, uh, there you might, you, you might, you might have got me there because there's no, uh, there's no, there's no negotiated agreement yet. I was, for fuck's sake. I was about to bring that up because I tried to do the same thing with my cousin's Cosmote subscription yeah. in Greece, and I, I was geo blocked. I could not really? download and watch it. So yeah. is it only a Europe thing then? Okay. So well, it's a Europe. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the, Adi, you, you, you definitely know more than yeah. I do. Well, that's for the US. No, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. It, it does work in the UK because I did it on my dad's laptop when I was there um, over Christmas. Okay. So it does work in the UK. Cool. Awesome. So that's uh, well, well done, British government, for making sure that Cosmodec can broadcast and we can watch Olympiagos in the UK. Or maybe Quad Returns. There you go. Uh, where can they find the pin? That's something that you that you can get from. You set it up yourself. So when you yeah. when you download the app, you have to set up your um, your account, give your details, etc., and and set up a pin for yourself. And it looks like we do have. Um, it, it does work in the UK. Looks yeah, like it, it does. It does. It does. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. That sounds right. That sounds like Cosmote. I remember when, uh, as we were ha have been talking to Cosmote, I should say, about getting availability of things outside. One of the things they said is, well, you get one device that you can stream if you have a subscription. 
<laughs> so that is that's correct. Now this is important too from Kosas Koya Sling does have the Greek package and it has it, but it's not all Cosmote games. It is um, whatever games are put towards uh, that they give to like Adena or ERT, which is usually Ert. like, uh, Ert, that's right. So the it's very finicky because I have Sling and it doesn't always have all the games. Um, so it's very finicky uh, regarding Cosmote. And I noticed that some when it does have games, they're not like advertised as Cosmote. They're advertised as like Ert or Adena and it's like low quality. Does that make sense? Like it's not like HD. It's it's one of those things. So Sling is an option. I do use it um, anytime Nova doesn't have any of the games. But when Nova Sports has the games, I use nettvplus.gr. The quality is fantastic. I can watch recordings of the games after the fact and basketball's on there. So maybe one day in the future, Nova Sports will have it again or Cosmo Day will learn from Nova and we can have the best of both worlds. Hmm. Going back to Oleg, yeah. So, so, so this topic like it evokes so much emotion. It's crazy. Like, and you you read some of the things that people post about him. <sighs> okay, I think I, I I I said some words earlier. Like, he frustrates me, but th there are some really good and interesting comments in the chat. Um, Andreas talking about the club might not necessarily you know, do the best job of developing players. And I want to remind people the player that we signed in January of 20, when was it? January 2020, 21. He came in 2021, January 2021 for 2 million euros. I'm going to ask a question for people to think about. Did we see improvement in Oleg Grabchuk from, the, from January 2021 to the following season? When we, qualified, when we qualified for Europa. I'm going to say we did. Because, did. because in that Europa League campaign, I thought he was one of our more crucial players. And and again, like the, the, the football that we were playing under Martins last season, it was, wasn't particularly good. But if you think about the Europa League games... Antwerp at home, he hits the winner. Fenerbahce at home, he gets the assist for Tiquinho's goal. And those two plays in themselves, they've basically ensured our qualification to the next round to go and play Atalanta. And OK, I'm talking about two games, but there was a step. There was a step improvement from the player that we signed to the player that we started seeing the following season. And it was never anywhere close to Timikas. Never anywhere close. And that's one of the biggest problems because we didn't sign a Timikas replacement. We signed a player that was had completely different attributes. It's like physical, a runner. And it's mentioned here in the comments again. Um, I can't remember who it was. Somebody mentioned it was a player that was running up and down the wing nonstop. But I'm sorry, when you play Sunday, Thursday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Saturday, Thursday, week in, week out, for two years, non-stop, with no competition, you're not going to improve. You're not going to improve. And it's time to go. And it's yeah. time to go now. There's nothing more that this player can give to us and, you know, there's nothing more that he can take from Olympiacos as well. He's going to stagnate and 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 fans are going to get more frustrated the longer he stays. So, um, the talk about Bologna is true. No. And quite possibly, he's going to be gone, like this transfer window. I don't know if it's going to be before next week, if it's going to be tomorrow. Some reports in Greece were saying that he's already gotten on the plane. Before this game, not true. He obviously played today, but um, but yeah, guys. Like I'm, I'm not, the, I'm not the biggest fan, but I wanna. I think we need to talk some facts and look back as well at the players' time at, at Olympiacos. I think we could maybe we could have got a little bit more out of him, a little bit more. Ari, you talk to you talk to people from Portugal about him back yes. in the day. If I remember, yes. 
that they were telling us that Oleg Rabchuk is better than Zaidu, like in terms of ability to, to improve. Yep, that's all of them. Uh, Luis, if you guys remember from um, 24 Sport in Portugal, um, that's like their ESPN, their Sport 24. And he is an analyst for them. And he had talked about, he's a huge Porto fan. And he told us that a lot of Porto fans at the time, uh, and this is the summer, don't forget guys, this is the summer after Porto got Zaidu when we wanted Zaidu. Fans were frustrated with Zaidu. They didn't think that he was a player with a high IQ. Oleg, they saw as a player that had a higher IQ and a higher potential for growth. Now, Costa, I'm glad you brought this whole thing up because I went and listened to a couple of our first episodes after Oleg featured for us last year or last year, two years ago. And the things that we talked about with Oleg were almost the opposite of like what we saw now. We actually talked about how we were concerned that he was over-reliant on his speed to get back. He would sit too far forward and then get caught. And he was really fast and he would get back, but there were certain players. Um, I can't remember which post-match it was, which team we played where he wasn't fast enough to get back because the the right winger that was on the team we played against was faster. Maybe it was Ike and Levi Garcia. Maybe Levi Garcia uh, was somebody was faster than him and he couldn't get back fast enough to beat him. Uh, we talked about how the toolkit with Tsimikas was um, – it was different, but Tsimikas was – it's not like Tsimikas was – and I don't want to say this because I love Tsimikas. I think he's an amazing player. But it's not – we Tsimikas wasn't a Marcelo. Tsimikas was very stable defensively. But going forward, it's not like Tsimikas had the widest toolkit of offensive abilities, at least while he was with us. But what he did do well was he crossed the ball very well, and he could get out of trouble. He, it's not like he had the widest of toolkits, but he was very good, very efficient with everything that he did. Now, the problem with Oleg became if there was a transition between – and I, I blame Martins for this. The longer he was with us, the more conservative he became in his game. That could have been due to fatigue, him playing all the time, but – I'm going to blame some of that on Martins because Martins was playing more and more pessimistic with the team as time went on. So I believe that he probably would have held all leg back and maybe had more of a defensive mindset because you don't go from being a player that runs forward all the time, up and back, up and back to all of a sudden stopping. You, you don't just forget. You don't just stop. It's A lot of it has to be instruction and routine. That's my opinion on the matter, at least for Oleg. Because when he first came, we loved how much he ran up and back, the overlapping runs. That was at a time also when we were getting upset with Rafinha on the other side for not overlapping. But Oleg did it. I think there's a lot of uh, good uh, good arguments here. I mean, I met Oleg, and I have to say that he is a really nice guy, uh, very <laughs> respectful, uh, very kind. I truly wish him the best. I truly wish, you know, th this is a character that deserves the best. Uh, there were some good moments with Rabchuk, but in football you need consistency, which I think he lacked. Uh, I was hoping for a big comeback after that goal against Antwerp when he scored that winner. I thought that this is, a, this is what he needed. This is the moment he's going uh, he's, he's gonna to push the on button right there. Uh, we didn't see it. Uh, the, uh, I, I don't want to pin everything on him. I feel like the coaching was not great because they had him play all the time. Surely there was fatigue involved. Uh, there were a few knocks as well involved, like that horrible injury with Eidracht Frankfurt. When that, uh, I don't remember who that player was. He almost ended Oleg Grabchuk's career only for a few millimeters with that stomp on his uh, on his ankle. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Rabchuk uh, goes uh, goes on and succeeds uh, succeeds at Serie A. We've seen it with Henry Onyekuru in Turkey right now. We've seen it with Kaupers in uh, Belgium, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I didn't see consistency from Rabchuk, so I haven't seen consistency from Rabchuk so far. Uh, I have seen moments, definitely not consistency. From then on, if he does leave, I do think he deserves the best. I think 
Lovely words, Costa. <laughs> I think we all do. And um, there are some of you asking, so what happens if he, if and when he leaves? Uh, Vrusai coming in. Uh, I, I, I don't think, here's the thing. I don't think we sell Oleg until we found a replacement. And I, think that's what's, and I think that's what's holding up the transfer now. Yeah, me too. To Suazo is the front runner so far. Yeah. So was it Gabriel Suazo, Chilean yeah. international? Is, Former uh, Colo Colo player. Apparently, Mitchell's got the hots for this guy, Lato, from, yeah. from Valencia. Yeah. He's not too keen, apparently. Yeah, he's... He's quite indecisive, and Gattuso claimed today that he might stay until June when his contract ends. Yeah, I mean, if you're a player like that who has left Spain before and had a rather disastrous time, at, you know, he, he went to PSV in the Eredivisie in, in Holland, and he had a terrible time over there. So I can understand his apprehension on the one hand, again, to, to leave La Liga, and then, you know, secondly, compounding that to leave La Liga to come and play in, in Greece then I can understand his, his hesitation. The other one's a bit of a gamble as well. I mean, the, the, the Suazo, Suazo has never played in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. He's, I think he's going going on 30. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. 20, he's 25. He's 25. Okay, my bad. He's Chilean. He's an international yeah. player. But he's mm. also been club captain at Colo Colo for some time. Um, I think so. Yeah, and like Colo Colo is a, another like demanding side in with a yep. demanding fan base in in South America. So if anything, like he won't have any problem adapting in terms of the, the expectation, the pressure, uh, etc. To to a to a point, but but it is a gamble. Like I, can we do better than Suazo, Harry Toffolo? Some people are. Saying some people are even some some journalists are even going out and saying, oh maybe maybe Oleg stays and Toffolo comes in as a as a as a reserve for, for for Oleg. Like I don't see I don't see Harry Toffolo leaving Nottingham Forest where he's a reserve to come and play back up to to anyone. Um, if I'm if I'm being honest, so always have. Um, there's always a window for like a surprise and you know, a name that we've never we've never heard of Ruben Vinagre. <coughs> Sorry, <laughs> never again, never again. Um, but but yeah, Suazo seems to be the name that's up there right now and the easiest one to materialize because, like you said, Costa, coach doesn't trust Marcelo to be a starter. Um, doesn't look like it's not the time for Leidner to play at Olympiacos. I've seen some comments as well. Some people are even saying they've seen him in the B team and he looks trash. What B team, Rebelia? What B team? Like, the state of that team is horrendous. First Horrible. The, the, the state of the league, Super League 2. Terrible. And the football that's played there is absolutely horrendous. Don't get ahead of yourselves. Doran Leidner... Most likely, we can make any we can pass any judgment on him when he comes back in the summer. It's not the time, I think, to 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 lump all this pressure on a player and you know pass the baton to him now. And coach isn't going to do it. So the likeliest scenario is that Leiden is going to go out on loan, guys. Uh, yeah. and, and let's see when he comes back. Anyone, anyone in the chat that said that uh, Doran Leidner was worse than like Adruzos or whatever, I forgot some of the players. You, you have your opinion, and it's wrong. I'm telling you. He is a great player. He has tremendous talent. He was picked as one of the top players under the age, top 10, uh, of course, it was a top 10 fullbacks under the age of 21 or whatever. He was on a European list for that. That's the one. He, uh, players at Olympiacos think he is tremendously talented. OK, there's a lot of people that think that know this kid has talent and that he is a great player. So I he's the fastest he's player on the roster. He yes. is the fastest player on the roster. So, we know that. We know that. Just wanted to make sure that that was clear. He is a great player. I am standing by my deep dive on him. I think he's a very talented player. And I think that he could have a great future at Olympiacos if he's given an opportunity. 
that's my uh oh uh and i know that i know that it's not like left back but there aren't there like two koreans that we're looking at as well um oh my goodness uh i, I i'm gonna butcher the names i'm sure <laughs> but one he, is like sung hung gook and then like uh it was a, one, one is a midfielder is the it or cho the striker yeah, one's a, and the other one's Song Hon. One's a winger, Song Ho Na, right? Is that, yeah. does that sound right? Yeah, okay. I think so. so we're looking at like a couple other Korean players, which, you know, in Bampong, we're like, hey, maybe this is an untapped market for us. We're looking at other players. So that would be interesting. I hope, hey, listen, I'm fine bringing in whatever midfielders you find. In Bampong was a gem. Maybe we find some others. This is a nice comment from, uh, Red Star brother he says you don't need players who aren't the same level like Marcelo. Better to put some young players to show potential than stars who are not the same level. Greetings from Red Star fan. Yeah, um, in a in a different kind of season, it's a difficult one this year. But but Mitchell's done it with Doy. I mean, he threw in a young player. But but I, I guess it's also one of those seasons. You know, now that we're talking transfer talk, it's also one of those seasons where. I have to say, like, it's January transfer window now, and I am enjoying so much that we're selling or getting rid of people or yes, loaning yes. out players. Yeah, because it's too much. It's too much. Like, we're talking about transfers, and the coach, the first thing he said when he joined, said, I want 24 players. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I just wanted to point, uh, just a tiny little parenthesis. This is definitely, in my opinion, this is definitely not the time for Olympiacos to be doing experiments. Uh, right now, when they're when they're still fourth in the league, they're seven points behind the top. Uh, they can finish, they can finish first. They can even finish fifth by the time the season is over. This is not the time for experiments. You gotta go with what's certain right now. I'm not saying play Marcelo, but I am saying that I don't really think this is the time to be bringing B team players in the starting lineup when you're pushing for everything and you could finish with no, and you could even finish with nothing. Not the time for experiments. I would definitely want to see a lot of that in the summer preseason, though. Yeah. What What else have we got here? Just um, in the comments, uh, Abu Bakar gone. He's gone. He's, gone. Back. He's, he's going back to Aris um, yeah. with obligation to. It's a loan with obligation to buy two point five million, as it's been reported. And Weijo Huang apparently there's interest from the MLS. Like there is an opportunity for him to go and play in the states. Uh, he has played for two clubs in Europe, so he can't go back to Forest and play for Forest or be loaned out to Europe. He can either go and play in the MLS or go and play in in Asia, as I understand it. Um, Surlis is being mentioned here again. Surlis's loan contract is supposed to be terminated. Yeah, but we we heard that some weeks ago, but nothing has materialized as of yet. Uh, and Kitos. Yeah, don't sleep on him. He gave a nice interview actually to um, Omonia's um, fan ch official like channel, um, Total Green. If anybody wants to go and listen to that, um, but he's a player to watch out for. We hear a lot of really good comments from from Omonia fans about about Kitos. No news on Avila, Costa. I don't know if you've heard anything uh, on, no on Avila. No news, but apparently, I mean. It's obvious that the Olympiacos are going to continue without him in the plans uh, until the end, until the end of the season. He has been touted with moves. He has been touted with interest, uh, but yeah, he's not. Um, it doesn't seem like he's part of the plans. I don't know anything more about Avila. I think that's it for transfers, um, guys. Uh, a few hundred of you have already tuned into the show. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, please. Uh, Hit that like button, subscribe if you don't do already. Uh, I can tell that uh, at least half of you do not subscribe to the channel already that are tuning in. Uh, it costs you nothing. It helps us grow the red and white community. There's a lot of great stuff that comes on this channel. We do a lot of great interviews. Um, we bring fans on uh, once in a while. We open the lines up for you guys to share your opinions. We have a lot of great stuff coming forward. So uh, subscribe and then don't forget to like. Every interaction, every engagement you guys have, uh, whether it's comments, likes, all of it helps with the algorithm. So continue to do so. Continue to engage with us and help us grow the red and white community. And on that note, we're about an hour in. What's the next segment we got up here, Costa? Is it uh, Man of the Match Coaches? Great. What do we got going on? 
I think you wanted to have a little chat about Fortunis, did you? Or, uh... That is right. Thank you for reminding me, Costa. I almost forgot. Costas Fortunis, the rebirth continues. The resurgence of Costas Fortunis continues. This man is doing all sorts of wonderful things for this club. And on top of that, his movement off the ball is incredible. Even the Costas Fortunis of the 2017-2018 season was not moving around like this. His movement off the ball, his tracking back is something I don't think I've ever seen in a season of him. And even today, some people already were getting on me about giving him a nine in the ratings. That was really more just a stamp that he was my man of the match because I gave in Bam Huang an 8.5. But I'm going to say it was only like three people that disagreed with this. A lot of people thought that Pep Biel should have gotten a much higher rating for the same reasons why I gave Cosas Fortunis at least my man of the match and gave him the highest rating. A lot of people seem to forget that he generated the fir the first and third goal. He is the reason we got – he drew the penalty for goal number one that Pep Biel scored. Pep Biel didn't score a goal in the run of play, not taking away from his performance. I thought he did well today. Pep Biel had shots that didn't go anywhere that were saved, and Costa made his penalty. Costa created the penalty that he scored. Goal number three. Oleg had the assist. It was a lovely little cross for a Bakambu header. Lovely. Who sent Oleg and opened him up down the wing with a lovely ball? Cosas Fortunis. Who had multiple crosses today that could have led to goals from Bakambu, from, uh, oh shoot, now, uh, and James Rodriguez, the header that James had. Cosa did all of that. So I don't understand how some people can only give this man a seven or a seven and a half when he was running things in the final third. Look, I, you guys already know I have midfield bias. I love midfielders. I don't think they get enough credit. So my, my ratings do tend to favor them. But I will die on this hill. My nine rating for Costa. That's it. He deserves it. He created the most opportunities for us. Ergo was deserving of that man of the match rating. And guys, little stat for you. Costa, in his time since the second half of the season started, he's been playing more regularly for us. This man in, in Greek league play has one and a half goal contributions per 90 minutes. That's direct goal contributions, whether it's like a goal or assist, something that sets up the goal. Now, if we include past two assists, hockey assists, second assists, over two goal contributions, per 90 minutes. This is absurd. The absurdity. It's amazing. I love it. I hope he keeps it up. Super excited to have him back, especially because I, I, I had settled with the fact before Michelle came in when all the nonsense was going on that we might not ever see it again. So I'm so happy to see him back. Um, really excited about that. TF91, This is uh, there were uh, some naysayers on social media that I'm addressing. A uh, couple of which may or may not be in the chat right now. We're not going to put them on blast, though. Um, but yes, uh, anyway, super excited that Cosas Fortunis is back in the fold. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I do because he looks amazing. It's the best I've seen him play. I can't, can't get enough of Fortunis. So I'm loving it. I'm just knocking on wood. It's like, stay fit, stay healthy. More, more to come from him. Um, the crowd is asking for Labro Sirmos. I thought Labro was joining us today. But yeah, me he's, too. He's done Can a. Someone, he's done a Honolulu. He's done a Honolulu. Like I don't know what he's what he's on. I I, I can't understand why his photo in, in his photo he really looks like a Republican nominee in his YouTube Stop. photo. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Be sure to bring him out of hiding. <laughs> But to be honest, like, I mean, Costas Fortunis, absolutely amazing comeback by this guy. Yeah. Uh, I will never understand what that, what in the name of hell happened in the summer with Pedro Martins to, 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 to push away a player like him. It really feels like a winter transfer that has come in to turn everything on its back. Uh, incredible stats already. Three goals, one assist in eight Super League matches. This guy contributes... 
uh, t- takes part in one goal in every two matches. He creates one goal in every two matches. Like Costa said, stay fit, stay healthy. This is a player who's going to play a key part in Olympiacos' uh, late push for the title. He's going to be very crucial in Olympiacos' bid to at least finish in the top two to turn things around and save whatever the hell they can save. I cannot imagine where Olympiacos would have been right now if Costa Fortunes was never uh, sidelined. Absolutely incredibly stupid decision to do this. Don't do that again. All the best to him, and I hope Gaspoye is watching, the Greek national coach. I have a uh, quick question for you guys. Oh, Costa, go ahead. Finish your thought. No, no, no. Like the Gaspoye thing, like, he needs to be managed. Like, if he doesn't get called up, I'm not going to throw a hissy fit over it. Like, like, he can get his rest when the others go and play international duty. I'm really not going to throw a hissy fit. He deserves a call up. Let me be clear. He deserves a call up. There's no player like Osas Fortunis, Greek. There's no Greek. There's no Greek player that can do what Osas Fortunis does. So only, Greek. only like a Karagunis type player back in the day, right. which doesn't exist today. Like his archetype, the things that he could do with the ball. Don't get me started. Like Marshall's going to get on and start talking about Bacasetas in a minute. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's not go down that. Let's not go down that path. Uh, Ari, what was your question? So my question was, so let's assume, and I hope this is the case. So what we've, it's, it's still early. It's only four games into the second half of the season, but let's assume Gosta keeps this up the rest of the season lights out. He's making goals, having goal contributions, doing great things the rest of the season. So his contract just got broken up. Uh, into another two years, right? They broke up his contract. The last year was broken up into two years. He just turned 30 in October. So he's at that, you know, one, two year, the, the peak of his career before it goes down. If he finishes the year very well, he's got one year left on his contract. Do you renew him again? We don't have to spend a lot of time on this because I'm sure there will be a discussion in the future, but if he can finish the season and continue this form for the rest of the season, are you considering renewing him beyond the last year of his deal? For, for like me, I said, we don't have to spend a lot of time. Just quick yes for, or no. Would you for think me, about it? I, I can't imagine, like, as long as he's fit and healthy, I can't imagine a, an Olympiacos team without him. I think, like, you can say a lot about Costas Fortunis' performances in some big European games. And like we could expect more from him. But in Greece, he's so important. You're seeing it now. You're seeing it now. And he's, you know, he had the preseason that he had. The whole treatment story of what happened over the summer, I still can't believe like we almost got rid of him. Or, you know, some people are even speculating that. You know, this whole story was you know, fabricated so that he could get a lower contract. And, you know, that's the story that's doing the the, the rounds out there. Right. I'm not, I'm not making that up. Like, that's being talked about on social media. On, honestly, like, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy for him. And I'm happy that he's, he's bringing, he's bringing it. He, I don't know if you mentioned it, Ari, the stat, like the goal contribution stat. Yes. Yeah, since he came back. Like our XG was what one point five or something before. Oh yes, yes. The the team's average XG per ninety was like it was just under one point five. It was not good. Um, and then now since since Costa has been back here, I can tell you guys. Uh, give me one second. It was like, it was like three or f- three three to four between there, wasn't it? Um, it's it's like close to three. Yeah. Uh, give me one second. Uh, I do love this comment, though. I would love to see Costa just finish his career with us. I think it's, that's like very it's like Predes. It's like Predes. Yeah. In football, for me. I think that's very likely, I think. Costa, it's the... it's it, He's... There were a couple games that dipped. So, like, if we're just taking, like, from the uh, Trombiros game to now, uh, and I don't know yet, it hasn't populated for today's game, but I imagine it'll be, like, high twos. It's around three. The XG is around three. So quite literally, since Costa's entrance into the team, we have doubled 
our XG. We've doubled the, we'll say the, the, the probability of scoring more goals, the opportunities um, that we get during the course of 90 minutes. So um, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. And you guys already got the stat that we gave you before about his goal contributions and then adding in his pass to assist. So the ball that he plays that becomes comes the assist afterwards, like the one to Oleg today, the guy is involved in that final product. And this is something that was missing for so long, even under Corbaran. You guys remember, we kept talking about how like we could get the ball forward, but there was no product. There was no end product. Well, now we have end product. It also helps that other players are playing well too. Pepe El, James Rodriguez was playing well. Bakambu can actually finish. So there, there is a lot there, but like the, he has the product that we've been missing. I'm going to keep it short as well. Uh, uh, I'm not really thinking ahead right now with this season at Olympiacos. I never experienced the season like this as an Olympiacos fan. I just, I'm just thinking on the today. I'm just thinking uh, on this uh, about this season. But I agree with Costa. Like this is a guy who's a point of reference, who's been a point of reference at Olympiacos for almost a decade. Uh, I feel like he also brings a personality. Ever since he joined Olympiacos, Olympiacos have been so much better on the pitch. It really feels like there's a new confidence. There's new arrogance in this team. There's a new, there's more chemistry. There's. It really feels like there's a point of reference, and that point of reference is Costas Fortunis. I believe. Yeah, I wouldn't be against the renewing his contract, and I could definitely. I mean, he's only going to be. He's only thirty now. As the years go by, he could turn into an impact sub like Mathieu Valbuena, especially in Greece, like you said, and you know, coming in and uh, create uh, and bringing in some, uh, some much needed quality. Uh, for a guy, for a man of his soon to be a senior age, I could definitely see him being a Mathieu Valbuena type of guy. I mean, it's not, I mean, the fact alone that he came in and he, and Olympiacos radically, drastically improved, I mean, that's something you should not, no one should uh, underestimate. Costa, I interrupted you. No, I was, um, I was provoked by a, a comment <laughs> about Henry and Yukuru. That's no, sarcasm. Too, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. The point that I want to make here is that Henry Nukuru is actually having a pretty decent season. A really in, good uh, one. Yeah. In Turkey, he's got 50, he's played 15 games. He's got six goals and two assists. It's for not bad. Uh, the, the name of the club. Demir Sport. Demir Sport. Yeah. On loan. Yeah, so he's on loan. There is an option to buy. But honestly, like, I, I do have this thought in the back of my head about on your in a in an Olympiacos team with a with a player or players like Fortunis like Hammers in the team that can find him the amount of times I remember Henry on your making darting diagonal runs into space and nobody picking him out last season now yeah he was the the, the coat of the season but I don't know, guys. That's something to think about. Like Henry and Yakuru comes back in the summer. Demir Spore don't um, don't activate the clause with a full preseason with the team if he wants to be there because there were like I do have question marks over that as well. Like, did he actually want to be in Greece that summer? He like I think we all know he wanted to go to, to Galatasaray. I think it was. Yeah. Um, he loves Turkey. Yeah, he, he he loves it there. I mean, he went there and got his hair dyed green. For fuck's sake. Uh, yeah, no, something to think about ahead of next season. But I think I think we touched pretty much all all bases. I've I've just noticed that we have hit two thousand sub two thousand seven hundred subscribers. Thank you very much, guys, um, for for all the support. Another milestone, and the road to three thousand is ahead like if you haven't done so already if you're new subscribe remember we're your number one english source your international home for olympiagos if you haven't voted yet for your man of the match uh, we're gonna i think that's that's the next one isn't it should we go straight ahead i would like to make a tiny little um little pause for everyone i would ask our good fans to uh to smash the like button if they think Labros looks like uh, like someone who's, uh, who's who's running for mayor in a Greek village, smash the like button if you think <laughs> Labro looks like a, like no. like he's running for mayor for the tiniest town in Greece. Oh smash God. the like button oh and subscribe goodness. as well. 
That is only if you think that Labros looks like he's running as mayor for the tiniest village in all of Greece. Sorry, not sorry, Labros. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> smash the like button, smash the subscribe button if you agree with what I said. I'm going to go on my account. Right, man that. of the match, coaches grade. <laughs> Let's do it. Man of the match, coaches grade. Who wants to start? Costa C, go ahead. In Bom Huang's my man of the match. I think I, I yeah I, I, for, for me for me it's in bomb I think his first half is like his next level like he he's done everything and we talked last week about you know can he defend and is he a bit soft <sighs> the guy does everything that a six can do everything that an eight can do and everything that a ten can do all in one package and he put that on display in the first half and the goal was. The goal was the proof. It was the testament. I mean, he stole the ball high up the field, <laughs> brought it onto his left foot, didn't think, just hit it. And it was a fantastic goal. And just overall, you know, I think he was flawless in the first half with his distribution. And for me, he he, he gets it. He gets it. Um, <laughs> GS is more like a used car salesman. Oh, my God. Goodness. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Uh, Labro, Labro, defend yourself. Like, where are you? Um, no. Labro, the used BMW salesman. I love it. I love what it. What have you done? Costa, what have you done? Labro, you need to change that picture, my friend. That's, that's the picture for your LinkedIn, oh, God. not for your YouTube account. Anyway, um, I'm going to give Mitchell a coach, a coach's grade. Uh, I'm going to give him an A. I think I, I liked his, uh, I liked his sub. I mean, what, what can you say in a game where he's, where the team's won four 0 I like the fact that uh, he brought Marcelo and Samaseku on together. It's something we've talked about, something I've talked about. I, 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 I like that. I hope to see Samaseku more in the future. And there is a, a little conspiracy theory that I have that uh, the reason he hasn't been playing so much is because we're trying to bring his price down. Was his uh, his his option fee is something like fourteen or fifteen million yes. euros? It's, that it's would double. be an that would be an amazing tactic. Like, to try and yeah. bring his price down ahead of the summer, knowing that Jan Villa's contract is also running out. But yeah, maybe that's a bit far fetched. Maybe it's not. <laughs> More like Volvo. Shit. Lab was still getting hounded. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, Costa, Costa K, give us your man in the match. Give us your coaches, really. I agree with Costa, really. I mean, I, 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 before we got in the show, I was really struggling. Who do I pick? Who do I pick? Who do I pick? Because it's usually someone who scored at least two goals. It's someone who's contributed a goal and assist, you know, something like this. But Juanca has been so instrumental for Olympiacos. What what an amazing luxury. Like you said, Costa, there's a midfielder who can do everything. He can cover all bases from the number six to the, even the number 10 position. Uh, he's been everywhere, uh, connecting uh, midfield with defense and midfield with attack. Absolutely stunning performance by Juan Guinbom. Uh, definitely a player that can also bring... Uh, not, not only he's gonna, he, he can bring success and trophies at Olympiacos, he can also bring, well... A really good fee, you know, because uh, people are already looking at him after his uh, performance at the 2022 World Cup. As for the coaches, great. I'm going to give him a name minus. Incredible win, uh, comfortable win, dominant win. I also liked what he did with Marcelo and Samaseku. I think Mitzel watches the show. You know, fight me. Uh, pretty much everything done there. Uh, and only a name minus because Olympiacos stagnate in the second half again. And like I said, that really, really uh, worries me to an extent because it's only going to get harder now when the Olympiacos play the big teams in Greece, especially in the playoffs, where they're going to play a total of uh, six, eight derbies. Actually, uh, they're going to have to be they're going to have to be at it throughout the entirety of the ninety minutes. Does that mean cooling it, cooling it down a bit in the first half? then, you know, I don't know what works, but Olbecos will have to be at it during the entirety of the 90 minutes. Well, you guys already know my man of the match. I gave it away earlier. Cosas Fortunis made two of the goals uh, that we had today. It was directly involved with two of those goals, I should say. Um, and as for coach's grade, 
Uh, I'm also going to say I'm going to stick with an A as well. Um, In the second half, you know, the second half, we repeatedly let teams get a little bit more into it. Uh, I don't think I don't think Volos had any shots on target in the first half. I know they had a couple like outlandish ones, but I don't think in the first half they had anything. They had a couple in the second half. Um, but all in all, I, they I, I was they weren't threatening to me, which is why I'm going to keep continue to give the A to, to Michelle. Um, I I hope that against the teams, the the Derby games, I hope he learned his lesson. Two goals, a two goal lead is not a safe lead. We learned it against Yanina. I hope he's continuing to deal with that. The the subs I liked at the times he made them were a lot better. Um, I don't know if I would have made so many subs so fast, but you know what? We I'm not going to be picky uh, on both ends. Uh, he made the subs. I liked the subs. I thought they were okay. He clo- he locked the game down. We saw it out for nothing. I think that's about as um, perfect of a performance as we can get from Ljubljana's team this season from the stuff that we've seen. So uh, it's going to be Gosas Fortuny's man of the match, and in A for the uh, coach's grade. And I wanted to shout out this comment real quick from TF91. Uh, guys, this is the best show channel for Libyakos. It's the most underrated channel in YouTube history. Greek-speaking fans should all watch it. Maybe do something with captions. I don't know. Well, TF91, um, 24 hours after the show goes up, uh, we do get captions. They're not amazing, um, but you, we do have... Um, we're at the stage now where YouTube will auto-generate subtitles in other languages for us. So right now for every episode, um, again, when it's available 24 hours afterwards, we do Spanish, we do French, we do Greek, and of course it's already in English. We are looking into ways to get live uh, like subtitles in other languages as the show's going on. So that is a much different prospect. That's much different software that's required because YouTube doesn't do that for us. Uh, we are looking into things for that. They are expensive, so we are looking into ways that we can get them. But that is something that we are trying to do moving forward is having um, subtitles or captions uh, in live shows. But thank you, TF91, for the comment. But guys, those those kinds of comments are, you know, it, it's it's great getting those kinds of comments. It really gives us motivation to keep going. Like, we don't do Gate 7 international professionally like to make money we do it because we we love doing it we 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 love olympiacos we're passionate supporters and we all met on the internet well i mean okay ari labro you guys know each other from from uni but like you know ari and i have never met in person that's right i met yeah. costa when i was in greece i yeah. didn't get to meet costa like my- i met the other Costa on craigslist <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding we didn't meet on craigslist we met on we, went, we went we had a bit we had a couple of beers in we in did Boston, in, in athens but my point is like guys this is a community we want to keep growing and you guys especially the ones that that tune in that the greek the greeks that live in greece like all of you you guys are our biggest ambassadors like Talk to your friends. Like, if you think this is the best channel, like one of the best channels, like, you know, tell people to to tune in and like, it's a conversation that th- this show is about having conversations with each other, having conversations with you, and we're not going to agree all the time. Like, if we agreed all the time, like this would be really boring. Yeah, uh, dis- disagreement isn't the end of a conversation; it's the beginning of one. So um tell your friends like okay f- for the moment we we have to make do with youtube auto uh, auto captions but when we do big things like the interviews that we do like the one we did with with Cholebas or Nikopolidis we did we did the Nikopolidis one in greek and we put english subtitles and we manually fixed those like those interviews that we do we we go into the auto caption we spend three four hours however long it takes to make sure that what is translated is what it should be yeah so that it's 100 percent authentic and and meant as it said yeah um so so yeah guys you guys are our biggest ambassadors and it's it's really an honor for us i don't think any of us ever ever thought this project would take off to the extent that it has of course there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to to make this happen and uh sorry i'm i'm ranting on 
but yeah guys um just thank you for the love and it goes it goes both ways it really does and then that the the growth also not only helps fuel more people to come in but it gives more credibility to a space like this like look from when we started to now we have conversations with agents with players with family members uh we have a much wider reach for things we get really good information now and we don't have anybody there's no sugar daddy here so everything we do is we get the information and we share it with you guys it's all because we love we love the team and the and the more people that get here the bigger the base gets the more credibility get the more people are going to want to share things with us and the more information we get so the cycle a rising tide it raises all ships here it helps it helps everybody and and we love to do it we're having more and more fun doing it and the more of you that get involved and talk to us like this especially the ones that we uh we have met in greece at the stadiums uh i mean that keeps us going on it's so fun meeting you guys talking to you guys uh whenever we can it's it's honestly it's an unbelievable experience for us um i don't know how it is for you guys but i know for me I, there's no feeling like it i mean meeting all of you guys outside of the stadium um garcy or Fis i don't know if that's fiscardo if that's somebody else um hussein we met you there uh, a bunch of the other guys i'm I'm, start I'm forgetting the names at the top of my head i mean it's an incredible experience so and i hope that we can continue to 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 build this yes guys we really appreciate you this show is only for you this this show is for all olympiacos fans around the world uh Thank you for all of your support. We're going to continue busting our asses here. Uh, and we're very much looking forward for the next challenges, no matter how how good or bad the team performs on the pitch. And, you know, it's already starting to look better. And, well, I don't like to think about the next season, but I do think uh, the next season is going to be completely different for Olympiacos. But anyway. Who did the fans vote upwards. for? For man in the match? What was the result of the poll? Oh, I got to. Let's see. Uh, Inbom 64%, Fortunis 22%, Rodine 9%, uh, 4% other. So I think there's a clear winner there. Really, really, we have a really smart 22% there. <laughs> <laughs> Did we get a lot of like buttons uh, for the Labros? Oh, I, I don't know actually, like ever since you mentioned the, um, the, the, the Labros trolling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway i i think that's uh almost the perfect way to to end the show there is yeah one one last thing we should do before we before we close is to have a look at the have a look at the league table so panathinaikos panathinaikos's lead at the top of the table is cut to was it six points from uh from ike and now we are what is that? That's seven points. Uh, we're behind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're joint third, fourth place with uh, fourth. with, with Balk and Ajax second. Ali's fifth, so it's fourth versus fifth next Sunday. And the 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 gap is the gap is uh, getting getting smaller every yeah. every weekend, guys. And they play Bass away. Bass have been pretty good. We mentioned already since the break, um, since coming back, and uh, we were talking about this offline. But I think Ike beating them must have really is, must really have an impact on confidence. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So let's see how they respond next week against Bass. I don't know who Ike are playing. I think they've got a relatively easy Panetolikos at home, if I remember correctly. At home, so you expect them to win. Correct. And they're going to drop got... points, though. At some point, they will drop points. Did anyone? Did any of you watch the game? The... I didn't, but I have like, I have been watching Ike's results throughout the season, and like they're not going to go undefeated until the until the end of the season. They're going to drop points, especially in the playoffs. I can see them dropping points, especially against the, against the strong Olympiacos team, like. Olympiacos are improving, guys. They really are. Yeah. They they play great ball. Like they possess the ball well, but they've got some space cadets in defense. It's it's yeah. it's something else. Like things can fall, things just like randomly fall apart uh when they concede. It's weird. But anyway, 
That's did, did I you, guess that's uh, besides. Did the point. you guys hear that Melisandis apparently gave the Ike players a three hundred thousand euro yeah. like bonus after yeah. beating Jonathan Agos today? I did not yeah. know that. No. Yeah. Good for him. Wow, that's a nice chunk of <laughs> for him indeed. Yeah, but okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Right. So, uh, guys, calling it a night. Till next time. <laughs> I guess that's it. That's it, boys and girls. Thank you guys for listening, especially if you made it for this far. This is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. We'll see you guys next time. We have a cup game on Wednesday, I think, right? Correct. It's the second leg of the cup at home. 4-1. So maybe we'll get a, a post-match set up after that game as well. But until then, we'll see you guys. Have a good one. Happy New Year to all of you. <laughs> Oh, pour pas Jésus, la